Today we will talk about the difference between what is IBAM versus BAM, uh, because there's a lot of confusion in the market. Um, and together with uh, two experts in this area, in corporate treasury in general, Michael from Deloitte, and Francois, who is the uh, chairman of the Association of Corporate Treasury in Europe. So uh, we have we try to have all the angles on uh, on this issue. So Francois, without further ado, over to you. Okay, so 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 thanks. J just to have a, a short introduction, and then I guess it would be question and answers. I, I keep thinking that um, although it's not the top priorities for corporate treasurers, according to the recent survey, uh, digital transformation of our uh, organization are quite important. Uh, but these days, uh, and I guess it's also linked to the current circumstances with uh, the crisis, etc., the top priorities of corporate treasurers are more let's say, on the basics, on the business. And it's why uh, it's not maybe um, as highly ranked as we could expect. But still, it's an issue for a lot of corporate treasurers. They need to be more efficient. Why? Because yeah, there are some risk of fraud. They have limited resources. They have a, a, a problem of, of cost. And so every single thing that could simplify their life could be, could be welcome. And when we talk about the bank account management, something that we should do, with or without the E, the big question, it's quite important because usually if you don't have a specific bank account management specific module, it means that you store your document in a, in office, uh, in somewhere, you, you save it on a, on, a, on a server. It means that you don't have a, a coherent, consistent, and uh, let's say a standardized process to store the document or to exchange the document. And what is more an issue, it's not uh, the storage or, or the, uh, let's say, uh, the way you will manage the document, but it's more the way you will transfer the document to your bank, and it's, link, and it's linked to the KYC issue. And, uh, of course, we would like to find a, a more secured way to transfer the information, especially the power of signature, which is a, a, a major issue. So, again, even if you are not to the IBAN, uh, um, uh, let's say, a level where you can transfer with a standardized way process information, it's important to have a better uh, organization of your bank account management because a lot of companies, when you ask them, a lot of our members are unable to tell you at any moment in time the number of bank accounts, the number of bank relationships they have within the group. So I think it's quite important to have that. It's not a top priority as of today, but still it's a pity that... Uh, at uh, the time we speak, with the evolution of technologies, we are still fighting to find a way to really make the BAM a real eBAM, whatever the way of transmission via swift messages or the channels. That's uh, the major issue. If I want first to, to depict the, the story. So I would say that uh, managing bank account is the Cinderella of treasury management. Yes, in indeed. Maybe Michael, from your end? Uh, yes, happy to jump in, and I would like to pick up what, what Francois just said from a corporate perspective and add a bit the spin, what we see in projects and what we especially had, let's say, call it a bit a, a catalyzator and enabler during the, the COVID times, what really was brought up um, to the surface in that case. Because the, the part is, it's maybe not the, the major building block, the major concern, but it's a foundation um, block um, really to, to keep track on what's going on corporate-wide, and especially when you're decentralized, global orientated, um, that bears different challenges. And um, going back to the COVID times, there were some things in where you put all the workflows you had completely through a stress test. And you found out, let's say, after two, three years, um, when you navigated the, these uh, rough waters, then that you were stuck at a certain point. You still had um, issues with the banks, or let's say people showed up on the signing um, cards. Uh, they are, no, let's say, since two years no longer with the company because, because everyone shut down a lot of things in terms of the communication and all the parts. And you don't have a unified communication platform, as Frosmos mentioned, and look at Swift, APIs, whatever. The part is there is no standardized way what was experienced over the last few years. And you ended up, and especially then we had some projects where saying, okay, well, look, you're still um, having 200 people on signing cards. They are no longer with the company, or you still have, let's say, colleagues on, or let's say, would like to have them onboarded, and you're um, in a, let's say, stuck in a delay um, circle with the banks to bring them really in the signing authority. And that really ranges 
and this sums up the whole bank account management piece, opening, closing, changing the accounts, maintaining the signatories, and also looking at broader spaces when you look at the KYC or all the, let's say, the full mil, full mil, sorry, fulfillment of the regular tropics. So from a corporate perspective, I definitely would see two, two angles of there. That's the part is really get the foundation straight. And on the other side, really be compliant with the regulatory requirements throughout the globe. So that's the thing what a BAM and IBAM definitely could help challenge uh, in the future and hopefully with technology, which is already available these days. For sure. Um, maybe Francois, uh, what I'd like to maybe your, your pick on is why from your point of view, um, things have not really worked so far, because like you said, this is the, uh, the century where we have um, super advanced technology. Why things have not really worked so far from your perspective? Uh, there are different reasons. Um, I fully agree with what Mikhail said that the, the the crisis could have been a catalyst for some some people. It's a question of maturity of the organization. And again, we have so many other things that uh, it was not a top priority. Uh, keep also in mind that uh, uh, depending on the TMS solution you have or you don't have in the organization, but if, even if you have a TMS organization and TMS uh, treasury management system in place, uh, sometimes a BAM, if it exists, it's a separate module or a separate solution. So you need to invest in another solution to implement this, another solution or to implement a new module within your uh, organization and to sell the project to your management. When you think about it, uh, uh, it, it has some cost, but of course you need to, to, to demonstrate to evidence to the management the return on investment because you invest in a solution that will help you in better framing your bank relationship. Potentially, it's also an opportunity with this such a project to revisit your bank relationship, relationship and to reduce the number of bank accounts because we have too many banks in general and too many bank accounts. So it's an opportunity to revisit and to have in one single register all the information related to all bank accounts within the group. If you decentralize the bank account management, that's a major risk for corporate treasury not to be, let's say, able to manage and to control the relationship. So why? I guess one of the reasons is the fact that we talk uh, about IBAM for years, five, six, seven years. We have the format, the messages in, within SWIFT. We have some other technology to transfer the information. But I don't know why. It seems that it's not um, working well. It's a question, uh, the same story about KYC, by the way. It's a question of uh, chicken and egg. Uh, it's also a question of... Uh, uh, yes, selling side, but waiting for the buying side to to to, to standardize the expectation. The buying side waiting for the selling side to have one single solution to manage all the bank relationship. Because the, the only thing we want is to avoid a situation where you manage part of your relationship with the system and others with other systems. So, ideally, would like to have this kind of unique and and uh, uh, let's say uh, well automated register to make sure that when you change a signature, as mentioned by Mikhail, or you change anything, uh, new bylaws, uh, new uh, uh, trade register uh, uh, information, you can inform all the banks uh, on a comprehensive way to make sure that you are not missing uh, a, a piece of information you should transmit to, to the bank. And, um, and of course, there are first the ban, but Ideally, in, in our maybe wishful thinking, we would like to go to the IBAN to be able to transfer the information, and some could be quite sensitive, in a secure and fast way, and making sure that the counterparty, i.e. the banks, receive and, and let's say, uh, acknowledge the reception of, of the information. Because, and we will talk about power of signature, it's a good example. At year end, we have the audit confirmation, and sometimes you don't dare to change anything before year end because you are just afraid that the bank will confirm something that it's not what you send to the bank because it takes a while for the bank to update the system and to make sure that the confirmation they will send to your external auditors is in line with what you have in terms of power of signature, in terms of bylaws, etc. So again, it, it should have been thought out, the same as KYC, by the way, but it seems that technologically speaking, it's not yet there. And again, it's a question of momentum. And I think that at the moment, maybe it's not the top priority. Although in terms of internal control, in terms of fraud, in terms of risk, in terms of 
cost of running all these bank accounts, the pressure could come from the sea level to, to find solutions to better manage your bank relationship, to try to reduce them and to make sure that you control at any moment in time your uh, relationship and that all the documents, as my, Michael mentioned, are uh, in order. So you are compliant uh, because we know that a a AML and KYC, it's more and more an issue for banks, but also for the supervisors in the, the different countries you are acting. So again, there are, to answer your question, Ricardo, there are many reasons. Uh, some could be technological, some could be question of momentum and other priorities. Uh, some could be also the absence of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, capability to convince the management of the benefit of such a solution for the company because the return is not immediate. It doesn't, let it seems to be easy to, to sell to the CFOs. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Francois. Interesting. I mean, from our experience from, uh, obviously from a Delega perspective is, it has been that true, this, I like to quote you, this has been the Cinderella of Treasury. Um, but it has, especially after COVID and with the very much increase on risk, um, it actually has become a priority for people uh, to have their house in order, to make sure that, um, like mentioned by Michael, when things like COVID happen and with the whole remote organization of work where people are, the house has to be clean and in, and in order. So that, that has been an evolution that we've seen, that we've seen more and more corporates are really trying to clean their house. Uh, maybe my two cents in also why it's not working from a more maybe solution provider standpoint. Um, very much of what we have witnessed in the past has been solution that are very focused on a technical exchange of a file. Um, so I send you an even fund, which by the way, I have to open a, a, a brackets here. The very first attempt of even will very much focus on the, I'm going to open an account with a message solution. A bank account manager, that's the whole title of today's discussion is goes beyond that, right? We're looking at what does it mean for a large corporate uh, to hold a list of who can sign for all their banking relationship in general. So who can sign for cash pooling? Who can sign for guarantees? Who can sign for you know money market deal? And together with who? And then you have the delegation of authority on bank account. So who has authority on bank account one, two, three? So the object of the delegation are, are, are multiples. And in that space, the previous solution, that's why we have created Delega, has been very much neglecting the whole workflow and process part when it comes to this, because adding one single person to a mandate, if you are a multinational corporate, it could very much be that if that person is, is senior enough, it can be on 20 or 30 banking relationship. That means 30 interaction with different banks where every bank might or might not need certain documents and every bank and you know, Francois, from a KYC perspective, every bank wants their own thing. And, and that's why we have developed more than an even solution. We have developed a workflow engine solution that support that process. So we kind of twisted um, the equation in, in a way. Uh, Michael, what is, what is your experience on, on that respect? Why maybe things have not really picked off so far? I think that it, that is really um, again a bit a combination of let's say a, a missing platform, but in combination with the the, the workflow piece, is especially looking at at more decentralized um, organizations, because the part is definitely you have let's say on out of the pay or out of the drawer um, a guideline where it says okay well uh, this person ABC is responsible for the whole bank account management opening process the control process and so on, but let's say then you move away from the central entity and go, go to more uh, decentralized process. You are highly dependent on the response times of the banks and all the things. And at a certain point, you normally, that is not, let's say, one person in charge of a specific part. It's more like they do different roles. They wear different hats on, on a daily business. So um, the, the part when it comes to bank account management or the controlling topics is 10% of their work time. So that's not the priority one. And 
that's a bit the part um, you need a unified platform to be able to run in a, in a lean organization, uh, the bank account management, and even as Francois said, move in the most automated way later on to an uh, electronic bank account management. So I think what was definitely missing was the channel that, um, or is in, in some pieces still in the discussions. That's a bit a bit part what I understand also from today saying, okay, well, is that still the case or is there a, a, maybe a, a part where you can have, let's say, a global foundation to streamline these processes? Ricardo, as you mentioned, looking at 20, 20 30 banking groups and get that uh, tracked. Is that one responsible person uh, tracking that one or you, do you need to run through the uh, regions to make sure that they are really acting on a centralized platform in a most centralized way when it comes to the policies they need to follow internally? And that again goes a bit back who funds such a project. Definitely it's a C level and that ensures at a certain point, um, let's say a global approach where you can have it a streamlined um, setup process, a streamlined tracking, where you can have, let's say, two, three people doing that globally in a most standardized and automated way. And I think these fragments is the part that the experience simply, you need to deal with every bank differently. That's one of the, 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 the hiccups you had uh, as of today and the ongoing discussions with a lot of other parts where we look in treasury in saying, okay, well, there is a, let's say, um, a, a bunch of, banks of, of let's or uh, financial counterparties they have a solution a the next one come up with the solution b and then your solution c so the, which is the one you follow that you are uh, let's say really betting on the right horse in that case and not ending up and implementing something and you need to change uh, horses later on and so that's a bit the fear in the combination knowing you need to do that but the missing platform or that unified approach you need to bank on that is the, the part what was missing. And that I think is the, the combination which holds a lot of, let's say, resources still accountable to, to follow fragmented processes, which bear the definitely risks looking at um, the AML piece, the fraud prevention and all the pieces there. Absolutely. And and once again, on that topic, I think you, you really hit the nail on the head. And also maybe let me bring my perspective of having spent a couple of, uh, double digits years in, in the banking industry. Um, you know, the, there is also the other side of the question, which are the banks, obviously, because like I lied about Francois, um, whatever message you want to send, it needs to reach your, uh, your counterpart. Um, and in that respect, I think one of the issues that we have seen, you know, being in the market now for a while and having talking to a lot of people in the industry is every bank has its own backend with its own structure. Um, some of those backend maybe are not the most recent, right? To, to set, put it down politely, they are, some of them are maybe from the nineties or even earlier. Um, and obviously it's a massive undertake for a bank to replace a backend or even to touch it at all. So I think in order to achieve, perf my two cents is that in order to achieve perfection, we have achieved nothing because perfection, yes, would be one file that all the banks can eat and all the banks can digest all the same, like a little bit like a, an XML SEPA payment. Theoretically, that's perfect. And if we aim for that perfection, I'm afraid that there's never going to be a solution because by the time that we really build up a system where only one type of file is created and all the banks globally are going to be able to read the very same file, it, it's like um, it's like waiting for Godot. We're just gonna wait. That's why we keep on insisting, and that's when together we um, some large corporates and and few banks, we have tried to actually try to think a little bit out of the box. We came out of the file structure topic, and we really pushed down the management of a workflow because all we need at the end, the corporate needs, is a is a way to tell banks what's happening and to potentially distribute some documents. Uh, down the line, um, we are trying to lead a discussion when that file creation, if you like, and standardization can be a topic of discussion, but that should not be the way to go for a solution that comes in the center. Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I mean, when, I, when we talk to people and in, within our working group where different corporates and banks are present, the, the very unified 
feedback that we get from all the corporates is that they want a solution that is working kind of soon. N nobody wants to go for a project that is going to last for you know 10 years and, and is not going to go anywhere because there's so many standardization processes that need to happen. So there is a, there is a very sense of let's do this, but let's also do it within the next one or two years, not within the next 10 or 20. Uh, is that also, Francois, something that from, you know, obviously in your role you see when you talk to corporates in your association? Uh, I, I completely agree, Ricardo. So if we want to have uh, at once the perfect solution, we will never reach it. Uh, it's the same with KYC, exactly the same, because we try to find a, a global KYC solution. And again, uh, uh, we are waiting for Godot because uh, we are waiting the bank and the bank are waiting for us. And so at the end of the day, nothing is moving. So I keep thinking that we should start gradually and find maybe solution or pieces by pieces, maybe starting with the uh, digital power of signature and, and try to find a solution. For KYC, my, my idea, my view would be that let's first work uh, in your own, uh, let's say, domestic market and try to find solution that could be interoperable uh, and even if we start with a couple of banks or part of the document, it will be already a success because we can get rid of part of the burden. What, what we all expect as corporate treasurers is to find a multi-bank or let's say a, a plural solution because what we don't want is to have a KYC solution with BNP, one with Deutsche, one with San Paolo, etc. We don't want to have a way to communicate with one bank and another way to communicate with one other bank. And for me, the transmission of this Information is quite important. And when it comes to part of the BAM or IBAM and the power of signature, it's quite important because power of signature is the key important information because we need to know if you have the power to authorize a payment or not. And I keep thinking that it's a, it's a nightmare because we need to get the information that it's on paper, usually duly signed, original document that we scan, we send by post or whatever. But we need also to have a way to digitalize this power of signature, to have a one central place where we manage that, and you feed all the systems where you need this information. You send it in a way that will be more usable for the bank and make sure that the information is immediately, uh, let's say, uh, 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 input into, into the system. Today, it's so manual that it's, it's uh, uh, let's say, uh, bottom-some and, uh, uh, and it it causes a lot of trouble because you're never sure that the information is received, is, uh, let's say, uh, input into the system, and that it will work. And that is really a, a risk of frustration. So I can imagine that compliance pressure and the efficiency pressure could help uh, finding solutions. But again, there is no one solution for everything. Don't, don't, uh, it's wishful thinking. Let's try step by step. And what I like in your solution at Delegas is that you try to, to find a solution for the power of signature and make sure that we have already secured what an important piece of this uh, uh, huge puzzle. Thank you, Francois. And Michael, from your perspective, and you are obviously in contact with corporates yourself uh, on, a, on a daily basis. What, what is that they, they ask? What is that they want? What are the two or three things that it's on their wish list to say, I want a solution that does? One, two, and three. So if I put on one, is then that what uh, Francois mentioned in, in terms of, let, let, let's say that the wish is definitely to have that one solution globally and uh, what aids everything. But I think what currently and definitely the status which is reached is um, that's clearly visible that some parts you need to cut it into pieces and start in, in really smaller steps and focus on things. So um, looking at the, the parts when it comes to, to the bank account management in terms of really have a centralized platform the, the idea behind this is that um, you don't go um, and I, t I take that what Francois said from the KYC process that you don't run through a dedicated implementation process and let me cite HSBC city whatever the, not the, the fragmented piece on a one-to-one -one relationship you know for more from a payment perspective you run the host-to-host -host connectivity that is the part what what the, I think the priority one is get rid of the, the parts where you need to negotiate with every bank um, separately so, so if the solution could provide that the central um, entrance and that's where you have the buzzword with the APIs and all the things these days for and saying, okay, well, have that standardized part and bring as many banks as uh, as possible to this part. Um, 
that's really the, the first part saying, okay, well, have a centralized platform, have a, a standardized communication where it doesn't break. So you're not, let's say, administrating it internally. And then you're taking everything paper-based again and sending it on to the bank and then waiting three months, maybe th that something is coming back. So really to be able to start the process in a digital way and have the communication with the banks in, a, uh, in, in an open conversation format uh, on an open channel, really focusing on pieces. And the bank account management, definitely for some, it's integrated in the treasury management system because that's, let's say, the smaller piece. What we have seen in a in, in, in bigger project, especially when you look at countries throughout the globe, where you don't have, let's say, banks reporting in a, in a standardized, in a reliable way, you are definitely looking for a solution which can keep a more digitized tracking and all the things. So the, the part is definitely knowing that you need to cut um, some parts into pieces, but bring that as, um, let's say, as automated as possible. And that's a part where I have a lot of discussion when it comes to, to my favorite area, which is the, the, the overall treasure technology part is look at APIs because you need to develop that once and you don't have the implementation process. Like you look at, let's say, a Swift connectivity or a host-to-host -host connectivity on the payment part where you need to replicate it for every corporate globally again. So the API is there and can be used in a, in a most standardized way. So I think that's the first one. You will not get that. That is, as of today, wishful thinking that you have that one-stop shop for everything, but it's more really go on the fragmented part, which really bothers you. And that's the part where they would see, okay, well, get it digital, um, digital and as open in the communication as possible. And definitely yeah. as many banks on board as possible then. No, indeed. And that is actually the approach we have been trying to follow ourselves within our initiative, where essentially, like I alluded to this before, um, we actually made uh, also um, a kind of a one step back to do two ahead in a way that we temporarily walked away from, let's find, like you said to your point, like one host to host for each one. And we made this a very corporate centric application that banks can go and interact with their own client, or basically the other way around. The corporates can go and allow the banks to interact with them from their own environment because that kind of takes away the dependency on, I need to have an API which is accepted by everybody or a host to host which is accepted by everybody. So the channel is, is one side of the story. Uh, then you have to drill down on the content. I think one of, maybe to go back to the original part of this conversation, one of the, one of the various reasons why maybe not so much has been done in this area, it's, it's a very complex uh, process. Um, and so it's not about the lack of technology. I mean, we're, we went to Mars, right? So there is enough technology out there. The question is, how can a very, very, very complex process be squeezed in a technology that allows an easy interaction that does not need one implementation at a time uh, for, I mean, you know that one good average corporates can have 40, 50 banks. So how do you come up, uh, out of that gap where I need to do a lot of work for one piece of, of one part of the treasury, right? So it's it's about simplifying and making it, essentially the way I describe that again is, is Google Drive made for treasury with the workflow underneath. Now, I, I'm, basically this is how we're done. So we have spent a lot of time with a lot of corporates interviewing them, talking to them, understanding how, how they work today, and talking to their banks, how they work today outside of a platform, to really replicate that process inside a workflow engine. And we have temporarily put aside the whole standardization of file, EBAM, non-EBAM, because that, that's going to come, and that's where we want to be. But to your point, you need to do one, you need to walk before you run. Otherwise, we, we're going to always steer for the perfect solution, and we almost basically never going to get it. Um, maybe, Francois, one, one last point or one last question from my end uh, to yourself. Where do you see this going further on? So where, where is the market, in a way, going, and what is the expectation that what needs to happen in the future from a corporate perspective? Again, looking at what corporates want. What is that demand? Yeah. Again, as as we know that uh, 
the perfect solution will not come uh, uh, suddenly uh, uh, ready to, to, to be used. I think that we as corporate, we should be part of the solution. And, and you mentioned uh, having some uh, case studies and, and to be pioneer and to be a tester for solution that could be a, a good way to, to do. I think it's a, a collaborative approach we should apply just to make sure that we are part of the game. It could be the fintech, like a delegate or some other solutions, the bank on one side and the corporate on the other side and trying to co-create together what could be the solution for the future. And even if it's just part of the solution, part of the uh, the, the issue you you sort out, maybe part of the banks, and you will not cover 100% of your banks, at least it's already a first step. And then you can become more selective and say to your banks, okay, sorry, but if you don't apply my standards, I will not work with you in the future. And you can try to be selective. And that could be a sort of, a, a sort of a differentiator when you start a new bank relationship. It's also, as I said, an opportunity for you to revisit your bank relationship and say, okay, let and we did the same exactly when we are we're implementing the connectivity uh, uh, with banks. So it's a good way if you, for example, use a Swift connectivity. If some banks are not using Swift, you can say, okay, sorry, but if you don't use that that channel, it won't work with me, and uh, we will not work with you. So we should also play on our power of bargaining and and, and negotiating with banks to find solutions. But we should be, let's say, involved and participate and try to help you guys and, and banks to find solution. Uh, it will not come uh, ready to eat and ready to use. We need to be to be part of that. And, and it's something that I really encourage. It's a takeaway for this uh, webinar to ask our, our members. So if you have some problems, some issues, fine, we know that, but try to be also part of the solution and try to help your counterparties and the stakeholders to find the solution. If not, Nothing will move, and then we will uh, uh, wait for years, as you mentioned, and, and maybe in 10 years, we still have no solution. A bit like KYC, where we are still waiting for global solution. It will never come. Let's start with local solution, partly cover our, our issues, and then try to expand and to cover the maximum of our needs. That's my, my view. Michael, what, what about you? What do you see from your end? Um, I would definitely, um, let's say, sign that what, what Francois just said, because the part is definitely, um, and to give you an example in a totally different topic where the time frame is even way, way longer apart. What I had recently these days is a discussion on a trade finance piece. And there is a part when you look at the, the, the things, um, the look of the letter of credits and all the pieces, and there is a, a bill of lading. And the, for the first time since many years, there is now consortium really saying, okay, well, we digitalize the bill of lading um, Till let's say 20, 30 to 100 percent. So that's what I meant in terms of different time frame. I don't let's say hope that we see that on the bank account management, but I think that is that is a unique um, setup set point and achievement. And now it's the, the part of where I really had a lot of discussion. Should we engage already? Because okay, well 2030 is way ahead. I said no. That's for the first time. I definitely would say take a step back and take the, the, the from a treasury perspective really the investment to really aid that whole development and drive it. Because the part is definitely, I think, in some parts, when you look at the trade finance piece, the next two, three years will be changing the landscape. And now, um, so be part of the change and initiate the change. And now going back to the bank account management and the, the EBAM and all the KYC topics, which are there around. I think the technology, um, Ricardo, you said that with, we went to Mars, we went to Moon, whatever, um, how, the, uh, how it played out is a different topic, but let's say th th there is a big foundation on, on the technology available. So be part of the game and be part of the change, drive it and take the action because that, that's really a playing field where you can drive the change in treasure technology. And I definitely, looking at the TMS vendors and all the things, sometimes it's that, that what I see, look at the fintechs and so on, that is a disruptive part and really where they challenge also existing parts, ex existing approaches. And I think that's driving treasury forward, um, utilizing new technology. So. Taking all these the different points, I definitely would also have that as a, as a call saying, okay, well, take the possibility. And yes, it's a it's sometimes painful. It's an investment. We are looking at lean treasury uh, organizations, especially when where what we have seen in, in the post COVID phase and so on. And a lot of job openings are there, and it's it's not the the goal to overload the treasury teams. It's more I think an invitation that all the treasury teams, and that's what also we encourage from our side in our discussions, take your seat at the table and drive 
the development by creating demands and challenging what Francois said, um, challenging the banks, saying, okay, well, we are not only looking at costs in selects and not just the, let's say, which region you go, what is the technical con uh, communication part you, you offer? What is, let's say, how fast do, we, do you adopt to changes? I think that's a part when it comes to the bank selection catalog, you bring them to the table in the future. Thank you, Mika. Maybe just my, my final two cents. I'm not going to repeat what you both of you said because I fully agree with both of you. So there's no need for me to, to repeat that. Uh, I can just maybe stress enough um, the call to action, if you like, for, for corporates. Um, we are trying to be that catalyst for changes, obviously, as, as a fintech alone. Um, we are not going to make it alone. So we already have built a group of corporates. Um, the group is um, open. Uh, it, it has been kind of a under the radar um, in stealth mode for, for a while because we, we want to get the you know the application up and running first. Uh, but now we're really actively reaching for more and more corporates to, number one, bring their own treasury problem into the mix because obviously there are decentralized treasury organizations, centralized, uh, regional, et cetera, et cetera, set up. And every Every company has a different way to, to handle this, this matter. So by talking to different actors, we want to understand and try to be the minimum common denominator about how do you organize your part of attorney? Is it by profile, but per people, per group, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we're doing. We're uh, inviting more and more corporates to, to be at, at our side. But before I kind of maybe close the remark, I'm, I just want to ask if there is any question from from anyone at the audience um on anything? well actually yes actually yes it's uh, rosella speaking and uh, i would like to know what are you doing uh, from the legal side i mean right now to solve all the issues that we are we were talking about <laughs> uh, well thank you Rosella. um i kind of alluded to it we number one we built a workflow engine that allows corporates to ask their bank to tell the number one, tell them what they need from them. So for every change you do, you can say, um, this is my new person, call in your bank and say, please tell me what you want. Uh, power attorney, passport, you name it. Secondly, we have allowed that communication um, to happen inside the treasuries sort of area of the corporate. So there is no need to plug into the banks because by a series of encrypted messages we allow the banks to basically give feedback directly into the environment of the corporates so that everything happens within the corporate space and every corporates can know who is working on what and finally we hold we give the corporates the possibility to hold a central repository where you can see you can invite you to each of the bank to say yes i i agree that these 20 people are the signatory for me or i don't and this is why i don't agree so again really this is the from a technical perspective. On the micro perspective, like I said before, we have a working group, which is now uh, open for more corporates to come in. And uh, that means that a new corporate comes in, brings number one, their way to handle it, but more importantly, also bring their banks into the discussion. And that we that's how we try to address the market side by creating a network effect where everybody brings their uh, way to handle this process, but also, pulls in their banks in, into that discussion. So this is in a nutshell how we are we're trying to address it. Um, anyone else? Otherwise, I mean, I, we're almost about close to the hour, so I don't want to take too much of, of everybody's time. Um, so anyone? No? OK, fantastic. Then I, I would just want to thank you for spending this uh, 45 minutes with us. And yeah, looking forward to, for the next one, we're gonna run a series of those webinar. So um, you're gonna hear from us and thank you again, Michael, and thank you Francois for spending your precious time with us. Have a good afternoon. You too, cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.